Hi friends, as promised, I'm back and I'm here to beam story time in your house. Today, we have a very special guest, Mo Willems. I think he is a genius. And as you know, most of my friends who know me know how much I love the pigeon. So this story is dedicated to my friend Parker. Parker, Miss Eva is reading you The Pigeon Wants a Puppy and so many of your friends. Are you all ready? The pigeon wants a puppy. I really do. You have to see the front because it's so fantastic. The pigeon wants a puppy. Words and pictures by Mo Willems. Oh, hello. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks for asking. By the way, do you know what I want? What I've wanted forever. At least since like last Tuesday. A puppy! Friends, it's an exclamation and it's all capitals, which means we yell it. We have strong feelings. A puppy! Puppy, puppy, puppy! And this shows that he's bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. Feathers, feathers, feathers are falling off the puppy, the pigeon, not the puppy. We haven't gotten there yet. Oh, don't worry. I'll take care of it. I promise. I'll water it once a month. Water a puppy once a month? Are you kidding me? What? Everybody knows that puppies need plenty of sunshine and water. Um, I think he's kind of getting it confused with uh, plants, maybe? What do you think? This is ridiculous, but I don't want to be the one to tell him. Oh, I get it. You don't want me to be happy, do you? Ooh, parents of teenagers, this sounds familiar. You don't want me to take a piggyback ride on my puppy or play tennis with it? You just don't understand. This is called sulking. What he's doing right now is sulking. I'm a puppy loving pigeon. Aww, puppy. Like he's so happy. He's thinking about puppies and he's so happy. Oh, get ready. This is all caps coming at you with two, one, two, three exclamation marks. Strong feelings. Are we ready? I want a puppy right here, right now. Woof. What's that? Woof, woof. This shows that there's some words in the distance that some sound is coming from the distance. Is it possible? Question mark. So we say, is it possible? Instead of, is it possible? He's asking a question. Is it possible? Have my dreams come true? <sighs> Woof. Oh my gosh. Strong feelings. Lots of capitals. Ah, yeah. Exclamation. Exclamation. <gasps> He's so freaked out, whoa. It's huge, the teeth, the hair, that wet nose, the slobber, the claws. I mentioned the teeth, right? Really? I had no idea. I've changed my mind. What I really want instead, a walrus. A walrus? Are you kidding me right now? This is my favorite. It's a box and the box says to the pigeon, inside is one, yeah, you guessed it, walrus. One walrus? That's so funny. This is the pigeon wants a puppy. Your first assignment, should you choose to accept it, remember this is all for fun. You are not going to be graded, but if you're wanting to take it up a notch in this quarantine adventure, I would love to see what your puppy would look like. And to get some ideas, you do not have to draw like Mo Willems, although he's awesome. This is the puppy that Mo Willems draws. What would you draw? What would your puppy's name be? Would your puppy be a boy? Would your puppy be a girl? Would your puppy be black or white or brown or spotted? 
or polka dot, polka dot, go crazy. I wanna see your puppy. This is your first homework assignment. Please draw a puppy. Name your puppy. And now we're on to number two. Yesterday, if you guys saw, and if you missed it, I'm getting good at this YouTube thing. My kids are telling me, tell them subscribe now. So subscribe now. That's a thing you do. Um, yesterday, uh, at the end of it, I had a graphic novel that was really long. Remember, I opened it up and I hadn't quite figured out how to um, film it all. But that came from No Brow Press, Nicolas Andre, and it's called Beyond the Surface. So if you guys wanted to check it out um, and support him, please, please, please support your artists. Um, and it's, it's absolutely beautiful. It comes in this fold out and then inside was what I pulled out. Um, and he drew this amazing self-portrait over here. You guys can see it. I think it's really, really funny. So that's number one. Number two is a song. I got a request. I'm taking requests now, guys. It's a thing. Pete the Cat, I love my white shoes. Thank you, Miss Prescott, for this uh, request. I'm happy to oblige. Pete the Cat, I love my white shoes. Art by James Dean and story by Eric Litwin. Pete the cat. Pete the cat was walking down the street in his brand new white shoes. Pete loved his white shoes so much he sang this song. And everyone that knows me knows that I love sneakers. So I sure do love this book. I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. Oh no! Pete stepped in a large pile of, dun, 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 that's when you tell me, what did he step in? A large pile of strawberries. What color did it turn his shoes? Y'all tell me, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. That's right. Red, R-E-D, scream it, red. And then we say, did Pete cry? And you say, goodness, no. So let's try it again. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no, I can hear you. He kept walking along and singing his song. This is funny, I love this part. Everything is cool. One, a two, a one, two, three. This says Mr. Eric. It's got a little guitar, a red car. I love my red shoes. I love my red shoes. I love my red shoes. Oh no, Pete stepped in a large pile of tell me cause I can't hear you unless you tell me. Blueberries, that's right. What color did it turn his shoes? I can't hear you. Oh, no, you said blue, that's right. And, and, and we're gonna scream it because it's all caps. Blue! Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. Say it, did Pete cry? Goodness, no. He kept walking along and singing his song. Over here he says, awesome. That's called a thought bubble. A thought bubble means something that he's thinking about. Awesome. I love my blue shoes. I love my blue shoes. I love my blue shoes. Oh no! Pete stepped in a large puddle of. I can't hear you. Oh, you said it. Mud. What color did it turn his shoes? I can't hear you. Oh, you said it. Brown. And I say, did Pete? Cry and you say, goodness, no. He kept walking along and singing his song. Down here, the thought bubble says groovy. That means cool. Back in the day, you would say that word groovy. Like even before I was a kid, like a super long time ago. I love my brown shoes. I love my brown shoes. I love my brown shoes. Okay, other people that know me know I love this page because another thing that I love, I love sneakers. And I also love dun, 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 dun. coffee. I love coffee. So I love this page a lot. Oh no. Pete stepped in a bucket of water and all the brown and all the blue and all the red were washed away. What color were his shoes again? White. But now they were what? Did Pete cry? I say, did Pete cry? And you say, Goodness, no. He kept walking along and singing his song. Rock and roll, Thought Bubble says rock and roll. That's a cool Thought Bubble. 
Also, wet shoes are the kind of the worst. That's why you need rain boots. I love my wet, he loves them though. We should be more like Pete, just love on everything. I love my wet shoes, I love, see you thought I was gonna say white shoes cause they're white again, but they're also wet. I love my wet shoes, I love my wet shoes. And over here, these are musical notes. If you guys know how to play instruments. Oh, and also I love that, that's a VW bus. That's one of my favorite VW buses. So cool. I love it in this little yellow house. Also, pay attention to the words here. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Have you ever put on wet shoes before? And then they are so squeaky. Oh, so annoying. The moral. I love morals. Morals are when you're reading a story and at the end of it, there's a message. So there's a message at the end of this one. There's a moral. And tomorrow I've got this whole book with stories and morals and they're so fantastic. This one is called The Moral of Pete's Story Is. And this is important for all of us, moms and dads and all kinds of friends. No matter what you step in, which is definitely true for these times, no matter what you step in, keep walking along and singing your song. Even if you step in poop because it's all good oh i just love this story thank you so much for sharing so homework assignment number two remember i will try to post these uh on the youtube page uh so that if you guys are doing this homework assignment at home you will remember homework assignment number two is homework assignment number one was to draw a puppy Homework assignment number two is to draw a cat. It doesn't have to look like this cat. I love this cat, but it does not have to look like this cat. But cats usually have ears and noses and whiskers and eyeballs. Um, and I, I would like your cat, if you can, to have a thought bubble. So you do teeny tiny little circles like this. Boop, 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 boop. And then one giant circle. Boop. And then if you have trouble with the words, you can ask an adult. They should be able to help you. Um, if not, try it yourself. That's fine too. Um, what, what is your cat thinking? What is your cat thinking? I wanna know what your cat is thinking. So that's homework assignment number two. What is your cat thinking? Dun, 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 dun. Uh, this reminded me so super much of one, of one of my favorite artists of all times, Bruno Minari. And I really, really, I really want you to look at this. He's an Italian, um, artist and well he was an Italian artist and illustrator um, and he had this really interesting way of drawing faces and I wanted you to just look at it I wanted to share it with you because I thought that it was something so interesting if you can look at all of the different some of these are just very 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 basic shapes right here but they all turn into faces look at that one that one that one that one that one so I wanted you to keep an eye on how to draw a face and, and what you might do if you were drawing a face too. Think about it like that. Bruno Minari. This is the book called Design is Art, Bruno Minari. Um, it's kind of a grown-up book. I mean, it's definitely a grown-up book, but the cool part about a grown-up book is that it's still fun for kids. I'm always so fun for kids because there's so many things to look at, but my favorite part about this page for sure, of uh, this favorite part about this entire book is the faces. So I'm gonna show that to you one more time. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, our next friend, special guest. We have special guests, Paul Thurlby. Paul Thurlby is a really good friend of mine, also an online friend, who's just a wonderful illustrator and artist, and I would highly recommend you guys check him out if you don't already. And this is a game called Wildlife Snap. But what I really wanted to do today, I thought it would be fun, is if I could take out a couple of these and read you some fun facts. Fun fact number one, arm to the teeth. Check it out. You guessed it, it's a shark. Sharks have got eight rows of teeth and are always growing new ones, making them dangerous predators. Get ready for this fun fact because it's really amazing. Some sharks will grow up to 80,000 teeth in a lifetime. 80,000 teeth? Think about how many teeth you have and how many baby teeth and when you lose your teeth and then you get your teeth again. But think about having 80,000 teeth. I mean, I have so many questions about this. Does the tooth fairy come to a shark? And if the tooth fairy comes to a shark, 
Do they pay in money? I mean, what do sharks want? And anyway, that's a lot of visits from the tooth fairy. If you're losing 80,000 teeth, I don't know. I have so many questions. That's number one. Number two, can you see it? I love it. This one says, feed it and weep. This is a crocodile. Chewing makes the crocodile's tear ducts spill watery droplets. What? You're telling me that when a crocodile chews, it cries? That is so funny. Look, here he is and he's chewing, but he's also crying. That's kind of funny. I like that one a lot. Thank you very much, Paul. We'll do one more. Let's do one more. This is called Mr. and Mrs. Earthworms. We love earthworms. And when it rains, you see lots of earthworms on the ground. And you, you can look at them and investigate them with a magnifying glass or with glasses. I'm wearing glasses. Earthworms can be both male and female at the same time. Did you know that? Earthworms are both boys and girls at the same time. Who knew? I didn't know. No idea. That's amazing. All right, friends. There's one more special guest. Ah, oh, Adrian Tomine, adore Adrian Tomine. If your parents get the New Yorker, not to say that you don't get the New Yorker, because you might get the New Yorker too if you get the New Yorker delivered to your house. But he uh, draws a lot of the covers, and this is one of my favorite covers, and this is going to be your last homework assignment, should you choose to accept it. Remember, if you don't want to, that's cool too. I am just gonna show you this because this was a cover of a New Yorker and there are actually no words. And well, there's some words here, but there's no story. And that's homework assignment number three. I want you to write the story. Okay, I'm showing it to you. We're zooming in. Zooming in means I hold the book closer and then further out. Okay, one more time. This is your homework assignment. What do you see? What do you see and where is it? And what's happening outside? And what's the weather? Hmm. Okay, I'll go first. I see an ice cream truck. I love ice cream trucks. In New York, I think this ice cream truck is called Mr. Softy, but I'm not a New Yorker, so I could be wrong about that. And if I am, I'm sorry. Um, something's really strike me here. It's definitely not sunny out. Hmm. An ice cream man is selling ice cream in the winter. Hmm. I don't know, I have some feelings about that, but I would love to hear your feelings about that too. So that's your last homework assignment. Homework assignment number three, please write a story about what you see on this page. Thank you, Adrian, for sharing this with us. I love it so much. Uh, and that's the original cover over there. Remember I told you that it might come in a magazine called The New Yorkers that your parents might read? Um, and that's what the cover looked like. Really pretty awesome. So we did a lot of things today. We did this. We'll recap. Ready? Recap, rewind. Hey! We did this. Pa Paul joined us. We did this. We did this. And we also did this. And we sure did this. Also talked about this. Guess what? I'll see you guys again tomorrow. Um, but I can't wait. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Uh, I can't wait to share more books and more stories and more things, all the things. So hang in there, friends, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.